everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Uh, today is a juicy one. Um, many of you have been writing me about your relationships and different things that are going on. And the question that keeps coming up um, that a lot of you have and that a lot of you are very ashamed to admit, which I don't think you should be, <coughs> is that you're developing feelings for someone else and you're still in love with your current partner. So this is kind of the gist of the podcast today. It's like, what do I do? Am I a bad person? And, you know, like, I still love my partner. I want to be with them. Um, but this thing's happening, that thing's happening. And you talk about openness and like, is this possible? And how do I even bring this up? And blah, blah, blah. So we're going to dive into that today. I hope that this is something that can be nourishing for you, informative and empowering because the point of us being in these bodies on this timeline is to have experiences where we are becoming more of our authentic selves, which equals us being in our full power, allowing as much source energy to come through as possible when we are our true selves. And we have to be very brave in order to do that because we live in a world where people have built a whole society matrix on the idea of conforming to what everyone else is doing and not being our real selves. So it is very brave to be yourself, to share your, share your feelings and to shine your light as your unique puzzle piece. So I admire all of you and I am sending you all lots of love and light. <clears throat> so before we dive in, I invite you to take a deep breath with me and notice how you feel in your body right now. So if you're in a place where you feel comfortable to close your eyes, I invite you to do so. And breathe, when you breathe in, I invite you to expand your stomach as if you're a pregnant person. So try and put as much air into your stomach as possible. And imagine the air going all the way up your chest through the top of your head. So breathe in. All the way at the top and hold it for one second. And then sigh out. And you can even shake your body a little bit. So let's do it one more time. So breathe in. Through the top of your head and out. And notice how you feel in your body right now. Everyone wants us to be productive and do all the things and absorb all the information. What really matters is how do you feel in your body in this moment? Because if you allow yourself to really drop into your body, everything feels so much better. The experience of being alive is so much juicier. <sighs> And whatever you feel in your body, just send it lots of love, energy, and acceptance. <clears throat> There's no judgment here. This is a safe zone. <sighs> so this podcast got sparked because many of you have reached out to me over the time that I've been making podcasts about openness. And I had one last night in particular that I was like, oh, I'm excited to make a podcast. Uh, so this person reached out and <coughs> she said that... She has developed a lot in her spirituality and basically like woken up. And this is what a lot of you who find me, many of you ask, why aren't more people listening to your podcast, Brittany? Because it's so amazing. And I will tell you that you have to be on a certain vibration to find me. This, this is like in the game of life of waking up and dropping into your body. You have to be on a certain vibration in order to find Brittany Bond and uh, be able to absorb her content. Because a lot of people see me, but they can't, they can't absorb it. It's just like too much. <clears throat> so if you're on this vibration and you're absorbing it, you're also in this place where you're like, you're waking up to the structure of reality. You're understanding why you're on the timeline and you're ready to play the game of life on a higher level, which is very exciting and also kind of scary sometimes. So this particular woman who reached out, um, she said that she's been waking up a lot and she wants to talk about spiritual things like what's happening in, you know, the spirit world, what's, what's going on in like the world and just like things that are outside of the normal things that we 
are raised that is appropriate to talk about. And the only person she can talk to about these things is her mom. So she has a partner and he's just not into this stuff yet. And she's like, I love him still. I would love, I don't want to give up on the relationship too quickly, but like, I don't feel nourished in my spiritual growth with my current partner. And a couple weeks ago, she met someone at her yoga, <clears throat> at her yoga class who meets those needs on a spiritual level that she can connect with and talk about these things with. And she's like, ah, what do I do? Um, because she loves her partner. She doesn't. So nothing's happened as far as she told me romantically, but she's starting to develop feelings and also a desire to explore the connection, which is nothing to be ashamed of. But she's like, I love my partner and that's what comes first and I want to protect his heart. So like, what do I do? How do I honor myself in this situation and also protect everyone and honor them? <clears throat> this is a really great question. So I wrote back to her. I'm going to read it to you. And then I want to go into this in a, in a deeper level. But first, what I said to her was, there's two things of how you can handle the situation. One, the best that we know, th the best thing to know is that not all of our needs are going to be met by our partner, our romantic partner. So emotional needs, physical needs, financial needs, um, spiritual needs, like we should be complete in ourselves uh, to, for the most part, as in like we can take care of ourselves, we can host ourselves and our emotions, like we can grow our spirituality, like we shouldn't be dependent on anyone externally for our basic needs of living hosting ourselves and growing our spirituality like those things are our responsibility as souls on the timeline and also we are here with everyone else in this beautiful microcosm of of all the, all of us growing our spirituality and being together on the timeline so that we can reflect things back to each other so that we can support each other and inspire each other activate so there's a reason why we all are here together you know if there was only one way to grow and evolve our consciousness there would only be one of us there's many ways and we can activate and inspire each other and have fun by connecting to each other right so the thing that is important to know, um, and if this is, this is something where it's like, if you are, I'll just speak to everyone. If you are interested in having outside connections outside of your partner, something that needs to be deprogrammed first is that just because this person is the opposite or the sex that you're interested in. So this can be, if you're interested in the same sex, it doesn't really matter, but it's like whoever so just because this is someone that who could be a potential romantic partner for you, that doesn't mean they need to be. They can still meet your needs. Uh, if they say it's like emotional needs or a spiritual connection without it being, without if you're in a monogamous relationship, without it breaki breaking those monogamous relationship rules that you have agreed to. So this is what I said to her. I was like, you can, this person that you met at your yoga class, like you can have this beautiful spiritual connection with them, emotional connection where you talk about spiritual things and you, or you guys are friends, like, and this can stay platonic and this can meet your needs that your partner's not meeting you here in this need for a connection where you can grow your spirituality by talking about it with someone else and feel connected to someone in the physical world while you're, you know, exploring things in the spirit world. So that's one thing that I think is really important is that our partner, like we as a society have become so like in silos. It's like you put each other in a box and you just like close the lid and you're supposed to just meet each other's needs and be happy ever after, especially if you're married. And that's just it. And it's such bullshit um, because we are raised to be in tribes, to be in community, to be having our needs met and nourished by many different people like kids older ones parents <clears throat> friends and if you're okay with non-monogamy like other types of romantic interests but if we're talking to strict monog even monogamous relationships your needs are not going to be met i think it's too much if you ask me this is my opinion it is too much to put on one person to have them meet all of your needs because again Yes, you meet all of your basic needs 
but that doesn't mean that you need to, that doesn't mean you have to live alone forever. And I would say the same thing uh, with your partner is like, yes, be, even though they meet your needs in a way that you feel nourished, doesn't mean that you need to hang out with them alone forever. Like, why would you do that? You might as well go live out in the middle of nowhere if you think that that, if you think that your partner can meet all of your needs and you don't need anyone else and you're good on your own, just being completely in your own bubble. And with Faraday and I, I would say that like, we actually are very good on our own. Like there's something on the human design charts where you can overlay two people's charts and the energy between Faraday and I, it's like almost complete. Like it goes, we very much complete each other on an energetic level. And at the same time, we have been in spots where we, we've been like up in Austria in the mountains on our own or like on this part well, on the other side of the island in a beautiful villa by ourselves and after a while I'm like I want to talk to someone else besides Faraday like I I have I have a, a desire and a need to be met by not just my partner and I think this is very normal and I think this is something that needs to be deprogrammed so that's the first thing Let's go deeper into the openness. Um, so something that is very important is, so yeah, this is the foundational belief is that, you know, our partner doesn't, is not required to meet all of our needs. And it's actually fun to have them met by other people in our community. It, it adds to, it's an abundance of, and it nourishes our primary relationship by, you know, when I go and hang out with someone else outside of Faraday, it doesn't matter if it's a lover or, you know, a friend or whatever. I'm so excited to come home and tell him all of the things that I learned, my experiences, and he's so excited to listen. And it goes both ways. Like, we're just so excited to hear each other's growth, whether it's with each other or outside of the relationship. And like bring that back into our primary partnership. The thing that is important is as we grow our spirituality, your whole view of what is your priority in your life shifts. So, you know, before you have grown your spirituality, you might have put a lot of emphasis on your career or gaining material things or anything, anything that's important to you. Like it could be even a passion that you have, but these are the things that you're like, I want my partner to match my needs up until this point, because this is the box that I put myself in, right? Like we, we create our reality through our belief system. When you wake up spiritually, you grow your belief system to be very expansive, to be very abundant and your box of reality, there's nothing wrong with being in a box. It's just that you realize that that box doesn't need to really be there anymore. So there's no judgment on people who are like, this is my bubble of reality and I don't want to look outside of it. As we wake up more and more spiritually, we realize that <clears throat> we don't need to be in a box and we're fine and we're safe. And also that our standards of how we want to be met by our partner are less material, like 3D things, and more spiritual and emotional. Because this is the vibration of the new earth. It's multidimensional. It's, <clears throat> it's being able to be fluid in between the physical world and the spiritual world. And this is what a lot of you are starting to become more comfortable in. So not just taking ayahuasca and then going home and like living your normal life. You're like, I have a spiritual practice. I wake up, I meditate, I do yoga. Like I'm really connected to my higher self. I go into nature a lot. I get the downloads. And, you know, the things that are nourishing for you are maybe to be in nature more, to, to <laughs> cook healthy meals at home, to be in your community. It's like, it's very like going back to the basics of what foundationally are nourishing for us as humans and also as we raise our vibration into the more spiritual world, like that's a weird thing to say, as we raise our vibration and we are able to connect to things outside of this 3D reality bubble, we realize that there are so many more things out there than what we can see in the 3D. And that's really exciting, especially if you have other people to connect to. So I'm saying all of these things to say that it's okay if your partner that you connected with before you woke up spiritually, um, there's nothing wrong with you if you shift your standards of like what is important to you. So I went through this where I was married to someone 
and I was 18 when I got married, so this is a whole other thing. But like when I realized who I was and what my standards were and what I needed, my partner, like I had outgrown my partner and that what I needed in a partner and who I wanted to be with, like no longer vibrationally matched with who I was married to. And this is okay. And like people don't have to grow at the same timeline as you, even though that's sad and can be painful. I made a podcast about this yesterday. Um, you have to honor and respect each other's timelines. So just as the other person needs to honor that you may be growing spiritually faster than them, they have to honor that you, or you have to honor, I don't know if I said that right. Like they need to honor where you're at and you need to honor where they're at, like on the timeline. And like you can't expect them to grow as fast as you are. You can share what you are learning. You can be the vibration of who you are expanding into and that can activate them, but they have to show up. They have to play the game with you. And if they choose not to, that's your choice of whether you want to stay around. So what I said to this woman was this, you have to, you have to decide if, if having your primary partner meets you on your spiritual growth is a standard that you need in order to be able to be with them. So for instance, like she's growing very fast spiritually and her partner doesn't meet her. Is that a, like a deal breaker for her? Like, does she need to be met spiritually in her relationship? And for me, for many years, I like didn't meet men that were growing as fast as I was spiritually. And so I, I didn't have this as a deal breaker, even though it actually was for me, like a standard that I needed to be met because eventually I would break up with them because I was annoyed <laughs> that they didn't meet me spiritually. And I was just bored. I was like, I have so much to say and so much that I'm expanding into and multidimensionally. And you're just kind of, you know, I don't care how much money you have. What I ended up doing was dating a lot of men who had a lot of money because then they could just at least take care of 3D things. But at the end of the day, they didn't nourish my soul. And so then I wasn't turned on by them. And then it didn't work out anyways. But uh, this is like, you know, 10 years ago when like the world was at a very different s space vibrationally. I will tell you that the world, like as a mass consciousness level, we are waking up. The world is waking up so fast right now. So <laughs> it is a lot easier to find men, women, aliens who are on a vibration that matches you. And also what I very much believe is if you hold the reality bubble that that person exists out there, they will show up in your life. And I think back then when I was talking about how I was just not having this as a standard, it's because I didn't really realize, I didn't have anyone telling me this, what I'm telling you guys. So I didn't realize that I could just hold that vibration and that manifesting bubble and the person would materialize into my reality because I just didn't know I was alone in all of this. So then when I realized, oh, no, 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 this is a standard. I need to be met in my spiritual path. Like this is actually the most important thing for me right now because I know what I know who I am in the timeline and I know that I meant for very big things and I need a partner who can meet me there and, you know, lead this new earth vibration with me. So with this woman, I said to her, you have to decide if this is something that is like a deal breaker for you to be met spiritually. The second thing is, this is where the openness is very interesting. Say your partner maybe doesn't meet you spiritually or in whatever way you feel like they don't meet you. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need to break up with them. That doesn't mean that, oh, I'll just, I want to give you some options here. That doesn't mean that, like may, if you want to commit to only monogamous relationships, yes. I will tell you that the new earth vibration is, is very much non-monogamous. It's very much realizing that the structure of monogamy was also placed primarily by governments and religious um, sex so that we, religious organizations, so that we could be more easily controlled. So <laughs> um, I find it interesting to allow ourselves to release the idea that monogamy is the best way and then see what journey you go on. And if you come back to the fact that, yes, you want to be in a monogamous relationship, great. But you chose that at the end of the day. Instead of having this default 
I am monogamous because this is the way I was raised to believe is the best and never knowing if you actually believe that or if that's just something your religion, society, parents taught you is the only way to go or the best way to go. I want you to choose, I invite you to choose to be monogamous if you are out of your own free will and not because society has told you that's the way to go. So the irony that I will tell you is that primarily Ferdi and I are monogamous, but it's not because we believe that that is the only way to go. It's because our standards are so high of who we choose to relate to outside of our primary partnership that a lot of people don't <laughs> they don't make the cut you know like I actually would love for both of us to have more connections that are nourishing for us um, but when you allow yourself to be this free the irony is that you actually don't act on it that much because then you really see what you how you want to be met instead of this box of I chose you as my primary partner so you're the only one so again, back to the story. The second thing I told this woman is if you feel yourself developing romantic feelings or if there's a spark in this new connection, I have found that the best way to protect everyone's hearts and also to be the most authentic version of ourselves is to tell your your current partner. So so, so this this woman met this guy in yoga. There's a spark. He meets her spiritually. Her, par- her partner doesn't. So there's two things. There's my partner doesn't meet me spiritually. And also maybe even outside of that, I just find this new guy attractive and I want to see where this connection goes, you know, but I don't want to hurt my primary partner. I'm in a monogamous relationship. What do I do? I feel like the best way that we can honor everyone, protect everyone's heart is before you say anything to the new guy at yoga, before you act on anything or do anything, before you progress further in that connection, go to your primary partner and say from your heart, from the most authentic version of yourself, I love you so much. And also I need to be straight up with you that there's someone here that I just met. And this is the the first, the thing that is the most important. I just met this person. I just started feeling, developing feelings for this person. And now as a team between you, you and me as the primary partners, I, I want to figure out what is the best way that we can navigate the situation where it is nourishing for both of us and where we both feel safe in this art connection. The thing that hurts the most is if you keep developing feelings for this person, maybe out of and you don't say anything to your primary partner, maybe out of shame or guilt, like I shouldn't be actually, I shouldn't be feeling this thing, or it's going to hurt my partner so much. What actually hurts your partner is the feeling that you kept something from them. Because in a relationship, like the thing that makes a relationship so beautiful is the energy going back and forth. And this energy creates trust and it creates this calm nervous system and the safety and this love that's going back and forth. And when you have experiences outside of the agreement that you made, so if you're in a monogamous relationship, this is just straight up the agreement that you made that I will not develop feelings for other people. I think that's dumb because I think everyone has feelings for everyone else and this is just the beauty of all of us connecting, whatever. But if you are chose to be in that relationship, in that monogamous relationship, the most important thing to do is to honor that until you choose to do something else. Until you choose to shift the relationship on a conscious level. So that means talking about it together before you act on anything, before you keep developing these feelings for someone else in secret in hiding this is when we become if we do that in secret that's when we are less our authentic selves so being your authentic self is not you know like every agreement is allowed to be adjusted as we grow and as we evolve everything changes that is the beauty so the thing is is there's nothing wrong with you that you develop feelings for someone else that's just how life is like we grow and this is why i think monogamy is stupid because it is creating confirmation of something that you cannot create certainty for. It's like trying to create certainty for something that is an unknown variable. You have no clue who's going to walk into your life tomorrow. You have no clue how you're going to grow and develop who you are. And so it's like saying, I promise forever I will only be attracted to you and 
I will never think of anyone else. And da, da, da. it's like setting yourself up for failure, in my opinion. Whatever. So if you agree to that, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. This is just my preference I'm stating. But what I'm saying is like the most important thing is to honor it, like to be your authentic self in that. And if you realize that you have outgrown that monogamous agreement to go to your partner that you made the agreement with and say, hey, I am growing and I'm realizing like if there's someone that you are suddenly attracted to, I'm attracted to this person and yeah, maybe I want to act on it, but I, I love you and I don't want to lose this right now. And so is there a way that we can navigate this where it's like honoring everyone? And then I feel like the deeper thing, especially in this situation, is she, this woman is saying that like actually what I'm sensing is like there is a basic need that is developing, a standard that's developing that she wants to be met spiritually. And so this might be an, a perfect opportunity to bring up this topic like I am growing my spirituality. This person sparked in me how much I actually want to be nourished in my relationships about being able to talk about my spirituality with the people that I'm with. I would like to do this with you. Do you want to grow your spirituality with me? And make it an invitation that your partner can show up for. Instead of going to them and saying, you don't meet me spiritually. This person does, so fuck off. Like that person's not going to take that well, right? Instead of saying, you can also go, I love you so much. I'm also growing. I didn't plan any of this. I met this person. They spark this in me. It's making me realize two things. I would like to grow my spirituality with you. Do you want to go to yoga with me? Do you want to learn some spiritual things with me? Do you want to take some mushrooms with me? And the other thing, I would like to develop the connection with this person. And whatever agreement you make after that, honor that agreement. So the thing that scares the fuck out of most people and the reason why they are frozen when it comes to going into an open relationship, even if it's like with their partner they're already in a monogamous relationship with, is that there's no more certainty it's like honoring the fact that the relationship can change, like on a conscious level, finally realizing the relationship can change at any moment. Yes, you can break up with your partner at any given moment. And what actually matters is the trust that you have and the agreements that you're making with each other and honoring those agreements and having very clear communication of what is nourishing for you and what makes you feel safe in order to open your heart to your partner. And a lot of people don't have the emotional tools to speak about these things. They don't know how to bring this up. They don't know how to speak up for their needs. Or, you know, a lot of women, we are not taught that our emotional needs and our sexual desires are valid and we are able to speak about these things. Like it's okay for us to speak about these things without us being labeled as a slut or something. Um, so I'm here to tell you that all of this is valid. And I think that the idea of monogamy is so fucking outdated. And a lot of the reason also, I just want to speak up also that a lot of the reason why women are feeling unsafe to speak or to step into an open relationship is not so much that like there's, there's the part of like, will my partner honor who I am in the relationship? Like, Will they just go off and fuck a bunch of women and then I'm just here, you know? Um, because a lot of men actually, <laughs> I've been here on this island, on Koh Phangan, where I see open relationships where the men are like, I want to be open. And then the what ends up happening is they do threesomes with another woman and their partner. And then so they basically just get an extra, they get an extra fun play and their partner may or may not be into women. So they're just kind of going along with this. But then when... <laughs> this has happened many times to people that I know here on the island. When the woman actually wants to go on a date, the, the guy freaks out and is like, I don't know if I can trust you and I don't know if I can trust this guy and this actually like hinting that they are being a slut. When the guy is going off and on dates all the time and bringing women into their bed and like having threesomes and going off on his own adventures. But when the woman wants to act on it, it's like, oh, I'm actually trying to protect you by saying, I don't think this is a good idea for you to go on a date with this guy because I don't, I don't trust him. And like, are you actually safe? Instead of realizing 
yeah, we're safe and we have needs and we actually have desires that we want to be honored. And yes, we can speak up for ourselves. It's like women have so much depth of emotional reality. We can handle it so much more than men in the openness category. It's actually men that have a hard time handling it because they have so programmed. I don't care what you, what they say. I don't, I will tell you something straight up right now that men on a subconscious level have been programmed for centuries that women are objects and that we are playthings, that they can play with us, they can play with multiple of us, but if we go out and play on our own, this is where the subconscious ape mentality programming of monkey mentality of your mind, ho, 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 it sounded like Santa Claus instead of an ape, but you get what I'm saying, is that, and you can test this, like, and you can, like, I asked this with even Faraday, like, straight up, we had this when I went on a date with another guy, and he's like, yeah, I'm, like, sensing this feeling of, like, not just protectiveness, but kind of like, yeah, this monkey mentality of like, this is my woman. And this is bullshit. This is something that we need to let go of as a society. And each one of us, as we step into our full power and our authentic authenticity and honor our needs and honor our desires and follow our joy, especially in the bedroom, especially in our sexual pleasure, this is where the real liberation happens. This is where the real shift happens. Um, and I just, it would make me very happy to hear more men be supportive of their, of their women. And I'm talking primarily about um, heterosexual relationships right now because I, I want to sh- give a shout out that... Um, same-sex relationships I have found that they go through so much shit from society standpoint that they actually are way emotionally more mature than or and also way more open to openness because they're already living uh, a relationship that's outside of the matrix uh, designated cookie cutter box that monogamy has been put in Um, so this is why I'm speaking to heterosexual. This also can apply to same-sex relationships. But right now I'm speaking primarily to male-female relationships because this is where a lot of our programming has been set into us. So yeah, I, and the second thing that I've noticed in my relationships um, around openness is you know, I spoke in my podcast uh, a couple, like the last, the two podcasts ago about like with this lover and we were in bed and, um, and you know, I, I was like, this person's not heart open. Like I don't want to connect to them. And I was, I was trying to figure this out because through experience in the last four years of me living on this island and growing my community, um, and half of that was me in a, semi-open relationship and half of that was me being single you know dating many people um i found that the kind of connections that are nourishing for me are heart open connections with men and women romantically that are in my community like people that are building the new earth with me that i know i have seen them show up in my life there is a proven trust there is a feeling of deep safety in my nervous system around them. It's like I know who they are in the community. I know how they show up and I honor and love and respect them for being their unique puzzle piece. I don't necessarily want to date them as my primary partner, but I love having fun with them sexually and romantically, you know, for the time that we're together. So what I see for myself, I just speak like, I, again, again, I said this in the last podcast is I feel like I'm like this explorer like a lot of people haven't gotten this far in like non-monogamy and um, I'm like out here like this is how I feel and th- this is me and my experience and I'm just kind of like reporting back my journey um, but what I see as the most nourishing for me in the future is me connecting with men who are in my community Um, that know Faraday and Faraday knows them because this is something he brought up like when I went on this date with this guy that he had just briefly seen but hadn't actually properly met or like checked the guy's vibe was he was like I actually would like to meet them 
I would, maybe I don't need to be best friends with them, but I, I want to know that you're with someone that like you're safe with and that I like kind of like vibrationally approve of. Um, and I'm like, okay. And it's because like when you're in a relationship with someone like every, like they say you're the, you are the summation, like you are the total of the five people that you spend the most energy with because your energy is going back and forth. Your belief systems are being reflected back to each other. And so you're like reinforcing this bubble of reality that you've created. And so if I have these ongoing loverships with people in my community, like Faraday also wants to know that he's cool with them, that they like, you know, he that he's like happy for me to connect to them. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I actually, I love the idea of that. And this is where it gets very interesting. When it's going the other direction, because there are women coming this winter that Faraday has met and I've also met, and I know that there is a connection between them. They haven't necessarily explored it yet romantically, but there's a spark, there's a vibe. I know that there's something that's going to happen. There is a lot of feelings that come up in my chest, and this is something that I want to share, especially for the women who are listening to this. And I was like really looking at this because I'm like, why do I, why am I so okay with me sleeping with men and having romantic relationships with men that are in our community and Faraday meeting them? And like, you know, even there's been times where there's men that I have slept with in the past and like we've all had dinner together. Like Faraday has been here and like there's been a vibe. But when it's been the other direction where there's women who I know are into Faraday, and that want to have a relationship with him, a, a romantic um, connection with him, why do I have these really negative feelings or like feel gross in my body? And so I had a, what I like to call a come to Jesus moment where I'm like really meditating on this. And I realized it's because as women, for, I think there's two things. One, there is, it's still a very novel thing to have a very good man who is also spiritually awake and a leader in the community. So like Faraday on his own is already this like specimen of like, wow. And I know I am also this, right? But there's a lot of women, I would say that <laughs> there's a lot of women who are waking up, like the women, we grow our spirituality, we grow our emotional reality. There's a lot of amazing fucking women in the world. Like I, I have them here. I have a whole crew of sisters here on the island that are leaders in the community. They're very spiritually awake. They're very sexually in their power. They're just vibing, right? There isn't as many men yet. I would say that the reality bubble, they are, they are showing up as much as they can. And also something that is very important, and this is something that, that Faraday honors, is that men are so willing to be that and a lot of times they need to be in partnership with a very powerful woman in order to step fully into their power so i would say that since faraday and i met he has really empowered me to step more into the public eye and really put my voice out there more so this is who i was already this whole time and he's helped me to broadcast my voice to the world so that you are hearing this message. So even before we dated, he inspired me to start my own podcast. He helped me buy the equipment. We were just friends, right? And since we started dated, he started dating. He edits all of my podcasts for me. He makes the thumbnails. He helps put it out there. He plugs it for me on his channels. Like he's really helping me get my voice out there. And I very much love that and appreciate it. And I'm so grateful for it. And on the flip side of that, I have been this mirror for him where he, you know, he got very far in the game of life in the 3D reality, making lots of money, growing his community, growing his spirituality, but he didn't have anyone to mirror him so that he could rise up even more. And then I entered his timeline and he had this mirror. And so he has grown so much in the last year where he's grown his emotional maturity he's been, he's able to host win, like I would say host me and my emotions so much better than when we first met he's a lot more awake to how like the reality of how women have been treated and minority like he's just like more 
down to earth, amazing, awake, and just like a cooler person since he met me. And I think that's great. I think he did that. But he did that in reflection with our partnership. So, you know, like he had to do it. I was just the activation and the spark, but he had to do all the work. And I, I'm saying this because there's probably so many men out there that are like, I am so ready for this reflection. I'm so ready to be reflected by a powerful woman. I just, where are they? So I'm saying this to activate all of you amazing women that if a man meets your needs like you know 80 90 percent and they just need you to stand in your power as a reflection for them and you know there's many times in my partnership with Faraday where I I just told him straight up this is not okay with me how you're acting I am not okay with this I'm gonna leave and like this is like I just do not feel good in my body around you and like something needs to change because I can't handle being in partnership with you anymore in this way. It hurts too much. And I honored like where he's at and like we've had times too where he's like, I want to grow my consciousness at this rate. This is the rate I'm doing it as I'm growing as fast as I can to catch up with you. But like I am doing what I need to to that feels good for me. And I also have to honor that not all of my needs need to be met by him and I can get my needs met outside of the relationship and also having to really ask myself, am I getting all of my needs, am I getting enough of my needs met by this relationship in order to keep going in this relationship? So you have to also honor, and what I'm the reason why I'm saying all of that is because if I had just been what, society programs you to be as a woman in a relationship which is pretty going along with whatever your boyfriend or husband says and just goes yeah honey whatever you say is perfect oh yeah you're great you're amazing he would not have grown and I would have suffered so stepping into the full high priestess mode of your archetype of who you are if this is something that you choose to be in your spiritual growth is you calling it out if it doesn't feel good in your body in a beautifully nice way and in a way that can activate and inspire your partner to become the man that they you know that they can become so there's a very fine line between dating someone they need to meet your needs like i would say the majority of them and then there is the potential of who they can step into as they grow right so like do not date men that are all potential (laughs) and no actual realization in the 3d like this there's a reason why i went to faraday i went to his retreat in austria when we were just friends because i wanted to see actually who he was outside of my reflection so i like put myself incognito he invited me to his retreat and i just watched him in action in his community and we made a a play party together in Berlin and I saw who he was outside of me and outside of my connection to him and I loved him already before we got together and so he was enough and I loved him I thought he was amazing and then we got in partnership and then we activated each other in all the ways so bringing it back to why I felt gross in my body around him connecting to other women in our community bringing it back to this there is so there is the one factor of there isn't that many men that are you know growing on a level that is is meeting me i'll just say that for other people maybe they there's many men but for me where i'm at in the timeline it's not that many the second factor is the way that like faraday hadn't played out a lot of openness And like I was saying before about how men, even in their deeper programming subconsciously, they still view women as like these play things. And there was sometimes in the beginning of our relationship, even though we had both decided that it was okay to play with other people, the way that Faraday went about playing with other women in our community, especially didn't feel good in my body. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything disrespectful to the women. I just felt like the way that he communicated and the way that he went about everything he could have honored my heart better and he could have protected me and made me feel like I was number one this is something that we have worked through 
and grown in. And I've also, a lot of it was also me speaking up in what I needed in order to feel safe in those situations because I was, some of it, I was playing out the role of it's okay, whatever you want, like that thing, right? Like where I just go along with everything, even though I'm screaming inside. So I honor that. <laughs> so that was number two. But the, the thing that I, f- the deeper thing that I think is like the juicy part of all of this is when I really felt into it, it was that as women, we have been programmed that other women are not sisters to us. They are a competition to us. And this is something that makes me very sad that as a society, unless they're, they're like your inner girl gr- group, you know, and, and within the, your inner girl, your inner girl crew, like your, you know, your best girlfriends, there is a unwritten rule that you do not date each other's partners. And if you do, there's going to be a lot of drama. So if you don't know this, this is something that is just in society because this is a lot of the way that women have been able to cut out this competition feeling is like, okay, within our inner crew, yeah, we don't, we can talk about our partners as much as we want because we know that this is a safe zone where we do not date each other's partners. Outside of that, there is this feeling of, of like, competition among women and this makes me very sad because women we are so collaborative we are so co-creators like by nature that there's such big opportunities for growth and connection with an openness between women if we allowed ourselves to really connect as women first before before going into relationships with the men around us so I will give you an example um, there is someone that Faraday was, <laughs> I'm not going to go into the full story, but there is someone that Faraday was interested in or is interested in that is, uh, within our spiritual community that this person lives not anywhere near us, but Faraday and her connect on Instagram. Like she's also famous on Instagram and in the spiritual community and blah, blah, blah. And Faraday and I talked about it and he was like I want to let her know that like I want to invite her out to Copenhagen and I, and I just was like okay like that he she's gonna if she comes like they're gonna be in a love bubble he's gonna show her the island do the whole like I'm your man showing you around and I was like okay like I honor this and also I was like I also honored it be- especially because I felt like she was on my level <laughs> and um I think that Faraday could learn a lot from her. Like it was like, yeah, actually go go have this connection because you're gonna come back into our partnership and, and have grown and like and you can bring a lot of this back into our partnership. So that was like something that was exciting for me. So he reached out to her and said, like I would I'm inviting you to the island and also like straight up I'm into you and romantically and it's okay if you're not into me in that way. Um, but I just I can feel a vibe and I wanna just honor it and be straight. And also just so you know, Brittany knows about this and she also she she also is okay with it. This woman wrote back to Faraday and said, Wow, that really means a lot to me that you're so straight up. I also honor it. I do feel a connection to you. And yeah, I, I, it's very hard for me to feel met by men because I'm at a certain level in my spirituality that I don't find a lot of men in. And the mo- she said, the most important thing for me is that Brittany is okay and I wouldn't want to ever affect how she felt. And so for me, I'd rather just be friends. And I was like, I have never spoken to this woman before in my life. And it was more important for her that I felt safe and that she honored the sisterhood. Like the thing that is really important is that the sisterhood here, out of all women, all women, we have the potential to be sisters to each other. And that means that we honor each other first before whatever the fuck is happening with the men around us. Like what comes first is the sisterhood and making sure each woman feels safe and secure in their bodies. And when I heard this message, when Faraday read it to me, I was like, I really want you guys to have a connection because, and I just felt this big like relief in my body. And I realized this is where the the deeper learning came. And this making this, I have never reached out to her. The making this podcast is making me feel like I want to reach out to her. Um, 
because this helped heal a big wound that I had in sisterhood because I've had a couple major situations where I have lost friendships with the women in my life because they fell for my partner and they cut me out of the equation emotionally and just went for my partner. I'm not going to go into them because they're very painful and it's just really fucked up what they did. But basically they went behind my back, made a connection with my partner romantically and just basically sacrificed our friendship. And I was just like, why? Like we didn't, didn't need to go down like this, you know? And it's, and it's just this competition feeling. And that has, because I have been on the brunt end of that and like felt how painful it is, I have always honored the sisterhood. And there's even, I might have shared this story before, but there was even a time where it was the first time I had made a connection with someone that was in a partnership here on the island when I first got to the island. And I met this couple at a party and I, when I hugged the guy at the end, I, w- I felt this spark between us. And I was like, like there's this big, beautiful man. And I was just like, felt so petite and safe in his arms. And he messaged me later, a couple of days later and was like, I would love to take you out on a date or something. I immediately messaged his girlfriend and I sent her a screenshot and I was like, your, your boyfriend's doing this. And, and he wrote back right away, like, oh no, she's okay with it. We're in an open relationship. I didn't care what he said. I was like going straight to the woman first to make sure she felt safe, to make sure she understood what was going on and to make sure she knew that I honored the sisterhood first. And she was like, wow, this is really meaningful to me. Like you're one of the first women who was like checked in and like made sure that I was okay, even though like a lot of women in our community, you know, have dated my part or whatever. Like, you know, like she's like, it's really means a lot that you checked in with me and you care what I think before connecting to my partner. And so she was like, I 100% approve of this connection. Please go have fun. Because she knew that her nervous system could be calm because there was no way that I was trying to take her partner away. And I feel like this is the deeper feeling is like, it's not the men doing whatever they're going to do. It's the women. Are we honoring okay, you are in a primary partnership with this person. I want to go have fun with them. But what I care about is you're okay and you're safe first. And I'm not going to take your partner. I'm not going to do anything to seduce your partner away from you. Um, Because like for me, I'm so comfortable with openness because I honor everyone. Like if someone's in a partnership, I'm like, cool, this is not my time to connect with you deeper than the agreement that you've made with your partner that's great. Like whatever agreement you've made, I want to honor that. And if I want to be in connection to you, the most important thing for me is to honor the women around me. And this is also why, like when I started my play parties two years ago, if someone came and they were in a coupleship, I stayed the fuck away from those men who were in, that came as a couple because all I cared about was that their, the girlfriend, their partner, the woman in the relationship felt safe. And I would go out of my way to run away from the men, even if they were interested in me and, and make sure that the women felt safe because I knew that as me, Brittany Bond being myself, also in my full sexual power and, or being the leader of the play parties, you, there is a power dynamic there. Like you are in the spotlight. And so I would like do everything I could to stay away from whoever was in partnership because I honor the women, I honor the sisterhood, you know, and I want them to feel safe to play. And it's already so hard to let go of all these negative beliefs that we have in order to step into our full power as sexual creatures. Let's not, as women to women, create more reasons to close up. Let's let's create more reasons to expand and drop into our bodies more and feel nourished in our bodies. (sighs) So that is something that... I think it's really important when you're considering openness is is like making sure that you honor all of these things and just making sure that you're being straight up and communicative. Like so many people feel awkward to be the first one to talk about these things when in reality it's if you're feeling the energy, it's already there. If you're feeling like you're having a you want to have a connection to someone else, it's like the the momentum is already going. The best way that you can 
honor all of this and like protect the people around you is to be as authentic as you can and speak up what your feelings are before you act on them before before so much time has passed and it feels like and it feels even like trust is broken just because like for instance you know if I met someone and Faraday met them and like like we tell each other straight up like yeah I'm I am interested in that woman or I'm interested in that guy I think it's hot or I, li I really like his energy because for us, the most important thing is that we go through it together, standing side by side as a team. That is the most important thing. It doesn't matter if we sleep with someone else. It doesn't matter. However, the connection develops with other people. The most important thing is that we are each other's number one and we are looking at this beautiful movie of life that's unfolding together. Like that we are in this connection together and like every, ex then because of that, because we're so open with each other, every single experience adds to our connection because we are each other's number one and we are each other's best friend and teammate and, you know, main, main player in this beautiful game of life. Whew. So I hope this helps you. If you're having feelings for someone else and you're in a monogamous relationship, tell your partner, let them know what's going on. It does not mean that you're a bad person because you have feelings. It means you're actually being authentic because I will tell you so straight up, your partner has had feelings for other people and it's okay. It's okay. We all have had them. You have to be literally dead inside to never develop feelings for someone outside of your primary partnership. Or you've just shut down your feelings so much that you can't access them and so you just don't know and somehow that makes you feel better because then in your belief system you've done everything, you're, you, you've honored everything. But I would say that's actually very sad <laughs> because we are meant to live life fully and of course being our authentic authenticity and if you're in your authenticity you are not hurting anyone around you because you're speaking from your heart, you're acting from your heart and you're honoring everyone else around you in doing so. Okay, that's all I have for today. So much more to say. Let me know how you feel about this and if it sparks more questions. Um, I just love sharing about this stuff and it makes me really excited. And yeah, uh, a little report of how we're doing on the day-to-day. -day. It's like very f um, cloudy here, like overcast and still very warm. I see in Berlin and many countries that it's snowing everywhere. Um, but here it is warm and cozy and rainy and Faraday and I have just been taking this time to be fully, we call it blobs, where we're just kind of laying around, watching TV, being cozy, like kind of Christmas vibes, uh, knowing that this week so many of my soul family are showing up and staying with us. Um, and starting December 16th, we are starting our ecstatic dances here on the island, which is the home base for our community this uh, high season. And those will be every Saturday morning from 11 to 2. We're going to do vegan potlucks and a community aesthetic dance and just have the best time. So I'm excited to meet all of you who are coming out to the island. And if you're here and you're interested in a human design reading, astrology reading, I do those only in person because I find them to be really fun to meet you guys. And... Yeah, lots of fun things. We, we're going to do our play parties at the, starting the end of December, like probably once a month. Uh, there's there's a couple. I don't want to I don't want to ruin the surprise. There's a couple other amazing events that we are cooking up right now, uh, but I'll release them as we launch them. But just know there's a lot of fun things coming. I'm excited to meet all of you. And Copenhagen is very warm and paradise. So get your booty out here. Sending you guys lots of love. Bye.